settings, settings, settings. I'm going to drop it just a little bit. Like seriously, I'm not asking that out of no. Okay, it looks like it's semi stabilized. Which is good, because this is what we're gonna be painting today. Sort of. Um blah, blah, blah. Honestly, that's actually probably fine. All right, we're gonna paint this guy, and you can tell by the title of the stream. In case anyone is watching or watches this later, I mean you're gonna watch it later. I'm putting it on YouTube. Uh, we're going to tackle Imperial Fist today, so we're gonna tackle yellow. And for that, I've pulled out a bunch of colors. Um, Blood and stayed mud is not necessary, but if you want to get rich stones, a kind of brownish red is a good way to start your base coating, uh, start the undercoat. Then it's going to basically all be covered with dark leather, which is a reddish brown. And then we have citrus orange, we have mustard gas, and then finally we have an iridated yellow. That's for the highest peaks. Okay. So. We're going to be doing this in the airbrush tonight, because these are all airbrush paints. Oh, Jesus. Make sure your airbrush pressure is good. Okay. Don't need to be too careful. This is an old, old dreadnought. It's plastic, but it's not um, great condition. Make sure your paint's coming out smoothly. All right, and just start slapping it on the guy. You don't need to be too careful. You just want to cover all the major panels that are going to get yellow paint. This includes the feet. Now at first it's not going to look great, so. But as I said, just remember, this is going everywhere that's going to be yellow. So at the bottom there is going to be yellow, which it will be on mine, just make sure to get it. And this is going to be a real simple way of doing it, but it's going to look nice on the tabletop, which is what we're going for. And 
And remember, with things like this, you're always able to change up your uh, color mixes and stuff like that, or, or your color uh, choices as well. So, you don't have to be doing these next these yellows. There are other yellows in multiple ranges, actually. So, in this particular range itself, if you don't want to do um, the mustard gas, you could do uh, jaundice or uh, one called craven. Both really, really good for this technique. It just depends on what sort of uh, yellow you want to achieve. But uh, once we're sure, we've got all the panels covered to the best we get our uh, ability with this color. And you want to make sure you're hitting the side panels there too. Uh, once that's good though, I'm going to pull out my airbrush cleaner. It says airbrush cleaner. It's not, not too much more other than a reservoir. To get rid of the excess paint. In addition, well, you can add just the next light, uh, color of paint in. It's a good idea to uh, try to get the excess out. So. All right. Try to uh, wipe out the excess paint from the inside as well. Getting excess paint out of the cup just makes sure that uh, helps make sure that when you go in for your next color, uh, you're not getting too much saturation from the previous. I do apologize. It, I'm dropping frames like crazy right this second. I got 1,014 drop frames, which is only a little over 6%, but still, it's not what I want, obviously. But we'll see what happens. Okay, so next we're going to take cracked leather. Or dark leather. Sorry, not cracked. Dark leather. Dark leather. And. Just want to make sure we get the previous color out of there and get dark leather in. Because dark leather is going to be a great foundation for the next color. Now, you're going to want most everything covered with this color. You don't need 100% coverage, though. Because anything that's really, really dark recesses, uh, any really, really dark recesses you have left over, are going to look, you know, pretty nice. And even if you want to, you can even fire down at a bit of an angle. Just to increase your chances of leaving some of those dark recesses behind. Like on the underneath here. a little bit spraying in there and to be completely honest doesn't even take a lot of this color to get good coverage already see that's actually really nicely covered okay 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 so Our 
gonna start dumping this while I make a change to hopefully fight off these drop frame problem. Uh, video. All right, that appeared to have helped quite a bit. All right. Okay, now that we got dark leather on there, we're going to move next to uh, the citrus orange, which is a nice, pretty flat orange color. Yeah, but it's going to be good for building up our base. The yellow. Okay, you're going to cover most of these panels. But you can leave some of that dark leather on the outlines, edges, if you want to. That'd be perfectly fine. It will help add to the effect that we want to achieve here. But as you can see, we're getting there. We're working towards the Imperial Fist color that we want. One thing you have to work out for, though, is tip dry, because you notice, I you probably can't see it, but at the end of the tip, there's a huge chunk of paint. Just get that off. Get that off by hand. Works really nicely. Citrus Orange actually has a really, really bad tip drying problem. So if you want, you can add some retarder to the paint. Uh, just so you know, though, that does keep the working time on the model up as well. So it's something to keep in mind if you do decide you want to try retarder. It's not helping that the way I'm spraying it is um, also little short, short tur little bursts that uh, contributes a bit to the problem. That tip dry is terrible. I am really tempted to do something about that. But 
But anyways. Oh, Jesus. What was that? Jared Toshkin, thank you for following. I just got your announce. I just got your notification. I sometimes stream different times of day, just so you're aware. So, uh, this game's good for you. I'll be streaming this time sometimes, and other times others. Just see what happens, what my, uh, schedule will allow for. sure we hit every ah oh, no I'm losing I hit every panel that needed it it looks like it and you can adjust too if there's anywhere you think it's a little too dark or a little too light let's go in but uh this is a great foundation for our next part which is going to be uh Uh, needle size, I believe, is point three, or yeah, point three. It's um the fine tip. It is the uh, fine tip conversion for the Patriot one hundred and five from Badger. So as I said, I believe it's when the and the brush is just. I mean, the brush is an old Da Vinci size four. I mean, it, this thing's seen better days, but it's still got its uses. Like for instance, I'm just using it to get the uh, paint out of the pot right now, emptied. Make it ready for the next color. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just trying to do this quickly, so I don't want to spend a whole lot of time working out with uh, retarder, stuff like that. It's in um, it's as I said, it's, it's an old, really, really, really old, like extraordinarily old dreadnought. That's got, like, if you, I don't think you can see it, but like the plastic is obvious. It, the plastic is damaged. Like it's got texture. It's not supposed to. Uh, most it's probably from um. 
either harsh paint that was put directly on the plastic or it was from uh, the person putting it together getting, getting glue on parts that it wasn't supposed to. But uh, now we've got a nice orange dreadnought. Now I'm going to pull out mustard gas. Mustard gas is not open. <laughs> We're going to link the CLO Dreadnought, and if so needed, I am going to also pull out the Iridated Yellow and give it a really, really, really bright finish. But the mustard gas is going to help tone this down slightly. Mustard gas is a really dingy yellow color. There. I mean, it's unmistakably yellow. Probably be a good idea to try to do that. All right. Well, I'm honestly not that concerned about spattering. I'll just give it a more dingy finish. Now, um, I'll consider that, though. And, like, it's not something I won't just, it's not something I won't try. I have some spare sponge sitting somewhere, so I'll try it soon, actually. Uh, no. I am not. Right this second. You can put GW paints through your airbrush, you just have to thin them. Uh, these are Minotaur paints, which are made for the airbrush, so they're pre-thinned already. Uh, they are, they are from Badger. So Badger makes airbrush colors. Uh, so this particular one's Mustard Gas. Uh, it's pretty similar to Avalon Sunset, I think. It might actually be slightly brighter. So, something to consider. I really enjoy them. The nice thing, the, the nice thing about uh, the Minotaur paint range is that it covers a good basis of like, strange colors you wouldn't expect, but uh, has a. But you should also find yourself finding colors that are good for uh, a lot of different 
applications. Like a lot of paint ranges. Is it really hard to get Badger stuff in the UK? That would suck. I mean, as far as airbrushes go, I mean, Badger's not the only. Not the only uh, kid in town. It was like you could do nicely with uh, Iwata or. Um, Trying to think who else makes airbrushes. I don't remember if Humbrol does. But I know Iwata makes good airbrushes. And so you just gotta do whatever works best for you in your area. This has definitely looked more Imperial Fisty to me. Uh, general tips, uh, practice on like construction paper or something first, uh, just drawing lines and circles and general shapes uh, just to uh, get under rush control. Uh, another tip I would get, uh, make sure is that uh, for airbrushing, try to make sure you have an airbrush with a trigger that's comfortable for you, especially if you plan on airbrushing more than just a few minutes at a time. Because like one of the worst things to do is to have finger cramps. Uh, this this actually does work, work great for me. Uh, I had um, a relative come over the other day who started doing some airbrushing for some of her home crafts stuff she does. And uh, let her try it out. She had a similar airbrush because uh, she also had a badger, but it wasn't the same. She said an obvious difference and that helped her with uh, this particular model, which is the 105 Patriot. Harder and Steamback, thank you. That was the other one that's really good. Thank you, thank you. That was the other company I was trying to think of. Uh, yeah, they also have really, really good airbrushes. But yeah, my, uh, she's not technically family, but we call her family. Basically said this one, uh, felt a little bit better for her just because of the bigger, uh, it had a bigger grip at the top. But it, yeah, do what, figure out what, uh, what compliments you the best. Now... Hardest part here is it's clearly yellow. So you can stop there. It looks really worn. Or you can take it brighter if you want. Uh, I was just testing to get it to this point to see if I wanted to get it brighter. I probably don't. The great thing too, with the uh, dark leather in there, dark leather is just in case you uh, were to have dry brushed the metal before going back and getting the other spots or something like that. Uh, that dark leather and the undercoat of uh, blend stayed mud is really great for uh, rust, for rust colors. Uh, but that's another reason why it's good for this this way if you're doing yellow. Uh, I actually am going to stop here as far as yellow goes. Um, a tip you can do, though, and yeah, Harder and Steambeck's a great airbrush company. Iwata's a great airbrush company. Uh, Badger's a great airbrush company. Uh, when I Badger's usually pretty good about. Uh, Customer service, like, 
uh, I had a complete breakdown of uh, compressor, which is not the compressor I'm using. I'm using a cheap Chinese compressor. Just because I uh, I'll use that until it um for about a half hour, then I'll switch to the other other one. Use that for about a half hour. So uh, by time, well actually, I could probably go about an hour with each. But by time you're you know you sw switch off. They've uh, they get a chance to cool in between, because really, the worst thing about compressors is just their their uh, the heat, the heat gets them. Alrighty. I mean, depending on your preference, you can take the yellow up a step further. But uh, that would that would be really really small highlight areas and a really really bright yellow, or or um, though to be fair, if you're doing this sort of um, more weathered look, like a pale yellow would be good if you wanted to go that far. But uh, I think this gets the uh, imperial fist look across pretty nicely. Now you can go in if you want to and you can start picking out the other colors. Like this would be red. Because it is Imperial Fists. On uh, the tip of this gun barrel will probably be red as well. Uh, do details. Get the metal all done. Whatever you want. Uh, but that's tackling yellow.